and welcome to ET Garage. I'm Eugene Tordo. Uh, I just changed the name to ET Garage from Eugene Tordo Garage. Uh, I just felt that it would be easier to find on the internet and uh, more people likely to click on it. So that being said, I want to thank everybody that's subscribed so far. I, as of this video, I'm just getting close to 500 subscribers. I need a thousand to be monetized. So hopefully I'll get to a thousand and I'll get my views will stay up because I need all that to get monetized. But anyway, today's video is how much gas do you burn a year through your Corvette or your Mustang or your hot rod or your pro any project vehicle that you have. A lot of people have uh, project vehicles that they only take to the drag strip. Uh, and uh, the people have projects that only go to car shows and then people have project vehicles that they use for track days and autocross and stuff like that and there are people out there that have project cars that also do double duty as their daily drivers so go down there in the comment section leave down there in the comment section how much gas you use every year well not not, not necessarily how much gas but how much money okay because like I don't really keep track of how much gas I use I do keep track and quicken of how much gas I use per each vehicle I got my shot my Chevy tracks and then this Corvette this 90 Corvette I'll leave a link somewhere up there that to about the Corvette and uh, I think believe last year uh, I, I can't remember the exact number but I'll leave I'll leave it up here somewhere in a little box with a breakdown of it uh, of uh, how much I spent on gas I'll give you an idea now that gas prices have gone up of course uh, and uh, I'll possible I'll travel more this year or less uh, last year I didn't go to as many events because of the COVID-19 this year should be different I don't know if I'm still going to travel as much, though. Uh, I'm kind of uh, burnt out on car shows. That's where a lot of them I go. So far, every car show I've been to this year, except for one, has been more than an hour drive away. Uh, they've been, they're anywhere from over an hour to well over an hour and a half drive. Uh, there haven't, there's only been one or two that have been close. And... Uh, well, there's been a couple that have been, well, more close, I mean, within 30 minutes, I'd say, of driving. Yeah, I'd say about 30 minutes of driving. So I do burn up a lot of gas. Uh, hopefully this weather will clear up and for the weekend, because tomorrow or Sunday, I want to go to the Weatherly PA Hill Climb. Uh, that's a great event. I'll leave a link down in the PA Hill Climb events. Uh, those events are great. They're not like a car show uh, where you just sit around in the sun all day and bake and... Uh, all day and wait to get a trophy uh, those this is where you go and watch an event and uh, they're always great events they always have great food and they always have great people and uh, they always have a good time uh, a lot going on you get to walk through the pits where you know where all the cars are staged and talk to the drivers and look at the cars uh, and they're not cars that are designed to be parked at a car show these are cars that are designed to go as fast up a mountain as possible and by mountain I don't mean like a dirt mountain dirt mountain I mean a public road that's been blocked off for the event where they go up a twisty mountain road one way uh, and you know of course try and do the fastest time they can uh, those are really great events if you get to see one uh, if not in Pennsylvania I know other states have a lot of them so uh, if you ever see one of them and you're an auto automotive enthusiast, check them out. But uh, yeah, you could burn up quite a bit of gas in your vehicle. So uh, that's something to keep in mind uh, when factor in. Like a lot of people, I don't think factor that into the cost of their project vehicle. But uh, if you do a lot of traveling like I do. You're going to be using a lot of, spending a lot of money on gas. Uh, you know, it's just a, one of the things when you're into this sort of thing, that's one of the expenses. Uh, 
I don't think a lot of people think about that. But it is something to think about. And keep in mind. Now, uh, I don't really have any projects planned for today. I was just going to talk about the gas. I like to make my videos at least 10 minutes long. That's supposed to be good if you ever do get monetized. But uh, it's going to be hard to talk about gas for 10 minutes. So I think I got another five minutes to go or something. But anyway, one thing I guess I could throw in this video is I just burned another chip. And if you never changed a chip swapped out a chip on a 90 Corvette I'll go over this this applies to the 91 Corvette and it I'm not sure about once they went to the LT1 uh, the LT1 because this is the L98 that L had the L98 and the uh, Corvettes C4 Corvettes the fourth gen Corvettes from 85 to 91 and in 92 they went to the LT1 with the Opti Spark and uh, I believe still in 93, you could still swap out the chip just the same way I'm going to do on this. And if you have a ZR1, which had the LT5 motor in it, starting in 1990 through 95, I know at least the 90 and probably the 91 had a very similar computer. And I know those chips can be swapped out the same way. They're not the same computer, but they're, you know, obviously, but... The, the chip could be swapped out the same way. If I'm wrong, go down in the comment section. Uh, let me know. And, uh, and we'll get on it with this rest of this video changing that chip. So I'll be back in a second. Let me rearrange the camera and get the hood open. Okay, here we are. I got the hood open and this is the ECM on a 90. On a 90 through... 96 fourth gen Corvette, you'll find the ECM here. Now they do change, they do change to this Fendel Lunum one that looks similar to the newer styles that you see on the LSs and stuff uh, later on. But uh, 90, 91, I think 92 and 93 used this. I'm not sure what year they changed to that, the, the Fendel Lunum one that is that you have to flash. In other words, there's no chip. But this is their location, no matter what kind it is. They're right here, easy to get to. Unlike other years, if you have a 89 through 84 fourth gen Corvette, it's gonna be buried underneath the glove compartment and you have to take things apart to get to it. Now, the most important thing about swapping out the chip on this is to uh, always disconnect the power. So you want to either and move this light around here so you can see it better. You got your negative battery cable you can remove or you can remove, let me see if I can get this here for you. i just unplug this wire here and that's what I'm gonna do. And that is the power wire for your ECM. Uh, I don't like to uh, disconnect, disconnect the, uh, The negative battery cable because then I got to do all my re reset on my radio uh, your if you have the automatic climate control it will have to recycle which that ain't nothing it only takes a couple of minutes and it doesn't really affect anything uh, but the I just hate going through the pain of doing all my reset and all my radio settings it's just a pain in the butt but uh, like I said the first thing you want to do is disconnect the power so I'm gonna go disconnect that this just unplugs little clip give it a pull pops out and then you'll have three 10 millimeter bolts one there one there one buried under there i just leave that one off because i'm always burning different chips and playing around and stuff and you take your 10 millimeter i prefer a ratchet wrench and you go like that and you go like that and put this baby over like that and you'll have this cover now I've seen two different style covers. This kind that uses a little torque bit, and that kind that just uses a quarter inch drive. Majority of them that I know of have quarter inch uh, hex heads on there that you just use. But uh, this one, for some reason, uses torque, and you might not have to use the uh, the handle on there if you do that. But 
I'm always able to just do it this way. I've never had a problem. Now you'll have a memcal in here if it's stock, if you're never taking the chip out. And to take the stock, I don't have the stock memcal in here. I got one in the house somewhere, but you can see that in my other videos. I'll leave a link to the playlist. And in this case, I'll get a closer up look of, uh, at it for you. I actually use a, uh, an adapter. I'll, leave a, I'll try and leave a link to it. Uh, I get it from Moats. And uh, let me get some better light location here. And uh, the kind I have, I have two kind. I have one where the chip pops in and stays in. I mean, you can still remove the chip, but it just, it just goes into a socket and stays there. This is the adapter. And then they have this kind where you just throw a lever and remove the old chip if you have this kind it's real easy if you're going to be doing a lot of chip uh, swapping chips a lot that's the kind you want to get uh, and if you want to put your new one in i keep it in this piece of foam you have to be real careful and all your pins are straight also if you look on here you'll see that little tab there that little round tab right there by my thumb a little, that little indentation, that's going to face that way. That's the best way to describe it. Drop it in, put the lever down, it's locked. Some people like to put a little uh, foam rubber here and, and attach it either to the cover, and that keeps this pressed in place. Now, if you have the memcal, uh, if you ever changed memory on a, a computer, a PC, a comp home computer, it's just like changing the memory uh, to take the memcal out. You just pop that and pop that and it'll pop up. And just if you put a new one in, you just make sure it's seated and that's it. There's nothing to it. Uh, I should probably do that foam on this. I'm not going to do it now. But uh, that's basically all there is to it. Uh, it's like a 10 minute job if you have a, you know, a year, a 90 Corvette or similar year where it's a, the style ECM and it's located in the engine compartment. Like I said, if you have earlier ones, you got to dig the sucker out of the dash, unfortunately. But uh, after you get it in there, you just uh, hook everything back up. Always remember, I'm always forgetting to hook my power back up, but I'll get the cover on first just to play it safe. Get a little screw start at my hand. Put the uh, other chip aside. Flop the bag over. Like I said, there's a third one here. If you never had it off, that's a little bit of a pain to get out. So uh, if you're going to be swapping chips, just leave it off. And... Uh, if not, it's no big deal. Really no big deal to get it back off and on. Uh, snug them up. No one over tighten. You just got to be snug. Reconnect your power. And it's good to go. I'll test fire it. Uh, my car is facing in the wrong direction for blowing exhaust out the garage door so I got it backed in but I'll start it up real quick make sure it works so that's pretty much all it is to it when swapping out a chip uh I want to thank everybody who watched so far. Uh, stop back, check for my other videos, or subscribe and hit the notification bell. Share with your friends. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless.